Did you ever have a mad idea? This box here is my wife's jewellery box and uh, looking at it recently the thought occurred to me that oh, that's about the size and shape of a big toaster. And I thought when, when would you ever have a wooden toaster? Um, think about fire hazards, my goodness. Um, and then that got me thinking what would an antique toaster look like? So just for fun today we're going to create photographically an antique toaster. The setup for this is fairly simple. Uh, we've got the um, antique toaster down here. Uh, I've just popped it into the, the um, kitchen setup. Um, just using the existing lighting in the kitchen. So we've got the under unit lighting here, um, lighting in the cooker hood. This camera, uh, which is going to take the shot, <coughs> tripod mounted, pointing down, because I want to catch the top. That's going to be important in terms of showing the, the slots. Um, box uh, to the front. This key could perhaps be the control knob of an, an olden time. Um, and uh, no flash, I'm just going to use the existing lighting, so uh, I'll tell you later what the camera settings have turned out to be for that. Um, but very important that the camera is tripod mounted because we're going to be doing two shots here, one with our uh, antique toaster, one with an actual toaster so that we get the slots on the top uh, and then taking that into Photoshop uh, to do the merge. So, uh, oh, first thing we have to do is make sure that we're able to get the white balance correct. So for that, we're going to pop <coughs> the colour card in and take a shot of that. Okay, so here we go with the colour card, taking care not to touch the colours themselves. So the next thing now is to get a shot of the box as the toaster. There we go, and I think we'll do one more. So having taken uh, a couple of shots of the, the box, uh, the thing I need to do now is replace it with an actual toaster. But I want to make sure the positioning is right because the, the angle uh, that we shoot this at is going to be important in terms of matching up the slots on the actual toaster with the, the top of the box once we get into Photoshop. So to do that, I'm just going to mix some cutlery and we'll put a couple of nails just there and there and it's in with the toaster position there we go ideal so it'll look real if we're actually toasting a bit of bread and we'll get a shot with the toast popped now once i finish the toast the next job is to do the composite in uh, photoshop so a few minutes see you there so I've now uh, brought all the photos into Lightroom, uh, as you can see here. And uh, we're just going to go into the develop mode. And this first impression, it's a little bit overexposed. So I'm just going to take that back a little bit now. There we are, that's looking a bit better. And what I want to do is come to the white balance and we'll use the dropper, go onto this grey, click there and that is now set. Next thing I do is go to lens corrections and as part of my process I always remove the chromatic aberration, enable uh, profile corrections and it's brought up the lens that I've used. So that's good, we'll close that down. And now what I'll do is down here, we will uh, go to the end, select all, synchronize, and let's check none. You've 
always got to tick the process version. But what I want to do here is uh, apply the white balance adjusting all the way through um, and the lens corrections all the way through. We'll synchronize those. That's done. <clears throat> so we'll come back to the first one here. And again, let's see, we've got one, two with just the box. Yeah, I think the exposure is just too bright. Let's take that, take that back a little bit. We'll take the highlights. I'm not too worried about the big highlight in the top of the box because that's going to disappear when we put the toasting slots in. But that's probably about good enough there. I want some light into the shadows. In terms of any more work here, um, yeah, how's the histogram looking? I think we'll take the whites up a wee bit, but just to before that starts to clip, take it back. Blacks I'll take down just a shade, and I'm looking for this arrow here going grey. There we are. Now the whites have gone a little bit. Let's take that back. There we are. So that's. That's about how we would like it. And that's sitting there quite nicely. Do we want to play with the tone curve? Let's try a medium contrast. Mm, yeah, that's all right. We'll go with that. Come back to the basic. Sometimes I like a little bit more vibrance in, so we'll take that up just a wee bit. Don't want to go too much. And I think here, looking at the colouring, <coughs> just looks a little bit too much on the orange and yellow. So I think what we'll do, let's take the saturation of the yellow back a little bit. And the orange, take that back a wee bit too, that's fine. Much of that's coming off the colour temperature of the under cabinet lighting, I think. Okay, that'll do for that. And then we come on to the various shots of the toaster. Uh, this one, oh, toaster's popped. Back to this one. This has got more of the, the lighting in there. You can see that the toaster's a bit older and some of these haven't lit up quite so well so I don't know I think I might go I might go with the popped toast actually as the the preferred shot I want to take the exposure up just slightly for the top it's really this area here that I'm interested in so we'll take that up a wee bit and lighten the shadows slightly Let's just make sure that, whoops, wrong one. Lens corrections, yep, lens corrections have come through, so everything else has come through. I'm quite happy about that. Okay, so let's go to detail. Press and hold Alt, move the masking up. That will show me how much I want to sharpen. What's in white will sharpen. Take the radius down, and I usually like that round about the 45-ish mark. I will take the luminescence up a wee bit because I was shooting on a, a bit of an advanced eye. So, so that's good. So number eight, I think we want for the, the toaster. And number three, we want it for there. Let's just do the sharpening on that detail. Masking, take it up to there, radius down, up to mid 40s, that'll do. And that should do about there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select number three, number eight, and we'll right click on the mouse and we will edit in Photoshop. 
Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and what that's done is it's opened uh, two tabs, one with the this image and the other with this image. Obviously, what I want is both of those uh, on the same tab. So what I'm going to do is come to this one, uh, click on the background, uh, right-click, and we'll choose Duplicate Layer. Uh, that's identified it as uh, Antique Toaster 1816. Uh, we want it to go to 1811. We press OK. And now if I come over to this other tab, there we have the two layers. Um, and I can now close this tab up here. No, I don't want to save any changes. So there we are. So we've got uh, background copy and background. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to double click on this and rename it uh, Toaster Top. And then I'm going to click on the background, do Control J. Uh, that creates a copy and we'll rename that Toaster Body. So obviously what I want to do is have this part of the toaster top showing in the toaster body. So what we'll do, we'll make sure that we've selected that layer. I'm going to punch in slightly so that I can see better what I'm doing. Hold the space bar, click and drag this down it more into the middle and maybe punch in just a wee bit more. So what I want to do now is I'm going to use the polygonal uh, lasso tool and I'm just going to highlight this area around here. I've decided actually in this instance not to go with the cable and the plug because I think it would just be a bit too much hassle for our purposes. So let's start, uh, let's start about here. And come across to here and just carefully click our way round that corner. Down to here and carefully again click round that corner over to here. Carefully round we go up to here and carefully click around the corner make the connection and now what we'll do control zero to go back to the normal view and let's apply the layer mask to that and there we go um <clears throat> we've got that now showing in the top but it's not quite it's not quite positioned as I'd want it, so I'm going to click on the image on the toaster top uh, layer, grab the move tool and just bring this slightly down to there. That looks about right to me. And if we punch in, that is looking pretty reasonable. So, control not for the full frame. And now what we'll do, control S to save this. And because we took that out of Lightroom, the, the save function will save uh, a copy of that now composited image back into Lightroom. That should now be done. Let's go to Lightroom and there it is. So what I'll do, back to Photoshop. Control W to close that, close Photoshop. And there's our image. Now all I want to do is consider whether I want to crop this a little bit. I think maybe those highlights up there are a bit strong still. So I think what I might do, let's come to here. Let's choose a linear gradient mask. Press and hold shift so that we get it nice and even bring that down whoops 
There we go. Just correct that. Take the highlighting off and I'll take the exposure back a bit. Take the highlights down. Take the whites down a bit. That's maybe too much on the highlights. We need a bit of highlight showing. Take the exposure back up. There we go. We'll close that. <clears throat> Let's have a look at before and after. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And uh, the question now is, do we want to crop that anymore? Maybe just take the knives out. Show it with a little bit of context of the cooker, but the main subject obviously is going to be the toaster itself. So there we go. There's our photo of an antique toaster. Well, there we go. I hope uh, you enjoyed that. I hope you found that fun. Uh, I certainly found it a bit of fun. I uh, quite like to be creative in that way sometimes. And uh, there we go. An antique toaster. Who'd have thought? So uh, if you enjoyed that, please remember, uh, give it a thumbs up. Remember to like. Uh, do consider subscribing and turn on notifications and that helps the channel. Uh, thanks very much and uh, I'll see you in the next one.